it's a nice hot sticky day here in southern maryland today uh, fortunately i'm under the shade in the shop as you can see i have the uh sheet metal it is all taken off the machine I'm starting to replace the bolts and nuts that look fairly rusted and uh, not structurally sound so i've been cutting those out i just recently cut the u-bolts out for the swing uh, latch so i'll be pulling a swing latch down and getting that freed up because that's pretty well tight um just all the other bolts trying to replace them and that's what I, my project is now i have the sheet metal off um, here's some of the nuts that i've cut off and the bolts are still in but these there's six of these that hold the main body down to the uh, undercarriage so the other ones look pretty good so i left them but those six the nuts were pretty well disintegrated as you can see behind me i have the uh, engine put in this 10b uh, we put it in late yesterday evening uh, we got it started and we um check the master clutch it's it's engaging but not engage disengaging very well uh we looked at some of the drums they're turning we just kind of play with it a little bit i'm getting ready to start it now we'll just do a little check of everything okay, you can see if this thing's going to start Success. Transfer punch and transfer up through here to get a, a center mark and then drill that and the same thing I'm going to do on this side, that bracket, I want to have the same thing where I'm going to mark it up through there and drill it. Okay, I have my transfer punch ready to transfer the holes from this bracket up to the bracket for the engine. And I'm just going to take point up, line this hole, just give it a little tap, give it a little dimple. Uh, a little more. It should be good. And then the other side, just tap it. I'm also going to take a permanent marker and just put a little circle up in there where that hole is. So Make it easier to to find that little dimple. Okay, and just take these brackets off, put them in the drill. It's the next step. Okay, I have the pilot hole done for the first bracket. I'm going to start stepping up to my final diameter. It's going to be a half inch hole for the bolt. Drill the half inch diameter hole now. This bracket's done and ready. Put on the machine. I have the engine all bolted down. This is my bracket I made. And I ended up having to put a couple shims under my brackets where it goes to the, the engine bracket to the body bracket. Still have to make this spacer here and I think I'll be done with bolting the engine down. It's all bolted down everywhere. Cut the U-bolts out of this house locked so I can get this down and free it up. It should come right on out. I got 
uh, pin I gotta take out back in the back you can't see it the house lock is out as you can see it's pretty well well you probably you can't see it's seized up but I can see that it's this is all seized up in here and all this is seized up nothing's gonna move I'm gonna need to do some heat and convincing and I see that there's a bend right there I'm not sure what that's caused from it looks like the other side is bent I don't know if you can see that but it looks like that side's bent down and this side's bent up so I'll do some research on that but the next thing is put a little bit of heat on here and a little bit of penetrate oil try to get all these putting heat on this and I tapped it a little bit with a hammer and tried to see if I get anything to move but nothing seemed to move so I decided to put a little bit of oil and if you notice this the tan looking material is, is cotton balls so I just put, saturate the cotton balls with some oil and that kind of acts as a wick to get the oil and keep it right there where it needs to go in and, and slowly penetrate into it I'm most likely have to reheat this part again but the cotton balls will hopefully get some of that oil down around those tight areas. I have this pin here for the house lock, and as you can see, it's it's bent up a little bit. So what I want to do is have a little spacer here to space it up. I'm just gonna take the press and push down right in this area to straighten it up. First, take it out there and heat it up a little bit to make it a little easier to bend. Have this part heated up good. Ready to put it in the press. Get it laid in the right direction. House lock is all freed up now. It spins easy. And it's, it's ready to go back in once I get my U bolts bent up. This is a U bolt that I cut out. Uh, I'm planning on using this as the mandrel to form that. I need to make up the uh, some tooling to support this while I bend this U bolt back into the shape. Uh, this is where I cut it off. I need to add the length for the the nut and then the extension of the thread beyond the top. So that'll be one of the projects we'll be starting here real soon. Today is uh, priming day. Uh, I think we got a little shower last night. So I wanted to start drying things up before I start priming. But got everything pretty well degreased. Cleaned up, sanded down a little bit. Should be ready to paint here before too long. Just finish priming the machine. It's green. Just finished painting it this morning. Looks a lot better than what it has looked in many, many years. I'm going to start the machine up now and uh, run some of the clutches back and forth and check out the drums. Uh, my next video we plan to be is the shovel front. I've already started on it and I have some video. I want 
to end this video with talking about some of the techniques that I use when I'm painting. First thing is when I'm getting ready to paint a part like this, try to get as much rust off of it as you can, all the loose rust. Then come back and degrease it real good with, uh, I use a pressure washer to kind of get in there and pressure wash all the, the dirt and the grease. And then when you prime it, you want to make sure that it's dry. In this situation, it was it had rained the night before. So what I did, I put the machine and had it drug into the sun and it spent all day in the sun drying. And then I put it in the shade to let it cool off a little bit, which is important because I personally don't like to paint when metal's hot or in the sunshine. Once the primer is on, uh, I protected it from any other moisture getting on any rain or dew because the, the primer can be porous sometimes and the moisture will wick its way in to the primer. And then when you put your top coat on, that moisture's trapped. So keep it dry. Uh, if you keep it inside, it's best. In this situation, I had it outside, but at that night I did tarp it over. And then the following day, make sure the primer is completely dry. Don't try to prime paint over top of uh, wet primer or tacky primer because the top coat's not going to do well. Put your top coat on in, in the shade or in the building. And then protect it for the next 30 days. Um, as I use enamels, and it takes about 30 days, maybe a little bit less, to completely cure. So I have the machine now, it's it's in the building here and it's gonna stay in the building probably for probably several months while I'm doing other work. So it won't get exposed to the, the environment. Uh, I've used these techniques many times and they work fairly well. When I don't follow these techniques, I end up with blistering paint. Uh, the paint doesn't perform as well, it fades faster. So it's just some tips that I have. It works for me.